Hey guys, I wanted to go over a couple things before you turn in your Project One reports. Um, mostly it just has to do with the collection of data and the analysis and so on. So let's let's take a look here. I want to, actually I want to show, there we go. So um, here's the program I ended up using to collect the data. It's very similar to the program that was in Tinkercad, but let me point out a couple of the differences. One is I added a line here called analog read resolution. That allows me to take advantage of the Artemis Nano's higher analog resolution. I set it to 14 bits, so it's um, <clears throat> four times, uh, I'm sorry, 16 times more uh, resolution in terms of voltage. The voltage, the analog to digital converter output goes from zero to 1023 to 0 to 16,383. So it's 2 to the 14 minus 1, 16 times higher. Um, and that's useful. Uh, the other thing I did that was slightly different is uh, instead of putting get uh, read analog here in the serial prints, I changed it to get average. And get average is a function that I wrote, which just goes out and uh, does a for loop calling analog read capital N times computing the sum of the results and then returning the average by taking the sum times 1.0, which forces it to be a float, dividing it by the number of uh, measurements n. And I chose n to be 20. Uh, it turns out if you, if you measure a voltage that has noise n times, the noise is reduced in the average by a factor of the square root of n. So that means we're getting over a fourfold, four times reduction in noise by averaging 20 times during the data collection process. And it only takes about a tenth of a millisecond um, to measure a voltage on the uh, Artemis Nano, a little less than a tenth, actually, of a millisecond. So that means we can get 20 measurements in two milliseconds. Uh, since we're delaying, since we're uh, waiting for a second every time we change the PWM output, uh, that a couple of milliseconds doesn't really make a big difference. So uh, you can you can improve the noise performance by by averaging. That's that's the point. The other thing that's different is uh, when PWM is exceeds 255, instead of just setting it to zero, I call a function called header. Header uh, prints out the CSV file column headers, sets PWM, PWM to zero, writes the output. Uh, to zero, and then waits five seconds. So it, it waits a good long time for that capacitor to be able to fully discharge so that you don't start collecting more data until the capacitor is completely to zero. So, but other than that, this code is exactly the same code that we used in Tinkercad. <clears throat> okay, and uh, it, I went ahead and copied and pasted the, uh, the data from uh, that that code into a file. I call it data1.txt. And you can see it's got PWM, A0, and A1, just like I printed it right here. And then it's got these floating point values. They're floating point values because uh, this guy returns a double. Get average returns a double since it's taking an average. So these are not integers. You, If you didn't do the averaging business, you probably got integers, but I got floating point numbers because it's an average of 20 measurements. Okay, the other thing I want to point out is that this thing hits 16383 with a PWM of around 196. So that's, beyond that point, it's just measuring two volts. Remember the A to D can't go above two volts. So that means that once it hits two volts, it's just gonna cap there. And we'll see that here when we look at the data. So uh, let's do that here in just a second. Okay. So I am, um, we're in DeepNote now. I'm going to go ahead and drag, drag that data1.txt file into DeepNote. You can see there it is. It's PWM, A0, A1, and so on. A0 is connected, remember, to the high voltage side of the sense resistor. A1 is connected to the low voltage side of the sense resistor. And that also happens to be, of course, the high voltage side of the diode, which uh, has its cathode, the other end of the diode, connected to ground. So A1 represents the voltage drop across the diode, and the difference between A0 and A1 represents the voltage drop across the sense resistor. 
So let's go ahead and read that data in. I'm going to import uh, NumPy as MP, import pandas as PD, and import matplotlib pi plot as PLT. Good. And that's going to fire up the machine, which will take a second. Okay. So let's load in the data frame. Um, it's going to be pd.readcsv, and it's data1.text. df, let's just look at the data frame and see if it looks sensible. OK, so a0 is floating point, a1 is floating point, pwm looks like it's an integer. That looks, that looks right. So <clears throat> I want to calculate uh, the top as the uh, data frame dot a0. I'm going to multiply by 2 volts and divide by 16,383. We'll do the same thing with the bottom, vbot. That's A1 uh, times 2 divided by 16, 383. And then let's just plot um, versus PWM. So we'll say df.pwm v top. And let's make v top a red line. And then plot uh, the Again, versus PWM, we'll do uh, VBOT. And we'll make that a blue line. OK. <clears throat> OK. So what I want to point out is that uh, all the interesting part of the graph is between where these two voltages differ. So down here, they're the same, so there's no current. There's no current flowing, no measurable current flowing until we get up around in here. And then by the time we reach here, we're done because we've hit the 2 volts and we can't go any higher than that using the Artemis Nano. So let's, um, let's do a grid here so we can kind of tell where we are. Okay, so this is around 1... 30 or 140, and then we're hitting here. Remember, it was 195 um, that we ran into trouble. So uh, what I want to do is actually let's uh, let's use. There's a technique called slicing, where we just look at the part of the curve that we care about, um, and I'll show you how that works. Basically, you use an index. It, the index and the PWM value actually are the same thing. So uh, I'm going to guess that this is around 130. And it goes up till uh, 195. We already saw that in the data. So and I'll do the same thing here. 130, 195. So slicing is a way to just get a piece of the array that we need. Uh, it doesn't like that. Oh, um, I'll say PWM is DF PWM. 130, 195. They have, when you make a graph, everything has to be the same size. So I won't get it right out of the data frame. I'll just grab from where I have it. It looks like that doesn't look too bad. Maybe I'll go a little farther, maybe uh, 135. So actually, let's do it this way. Start 135 and 195. And then I can just make this start colon end. Okay. And then um, we'll know at least what we got here. Okay. Now that's clearly there's white space there between the two curves. So I know I've got a, a definite current flowing. Okay. So let's calculate some things. Let's look at uh, R is. In my case, it's 130 ohms. That means the current is going to be V top minus V bot. And I need to use parentheses to make sure I subtract before I divide. And then what I want to do is just to take a peek at the data, let's make a plot of uh, 
I want to look at the log of the current on the horizontal axis and the voltage on the vertical axis. Remember, let's, let's just double check this. You know that th this is the model. We're looking at exercise two here. We're analyzing the data from the experiment. The full-blown Shockley model looks like this. It's an uh, exponential. It, you take the exponential of the voltage times some base current, and then you get some leakage current, and then you get the current actually through the diode. Now, we're dealing with voltage ranges where this voltage times Q, this energy, is much greater than KBT. So that means this negative one here is pretty negligible, so I can neglect it. And then I can say that the Shockley formula really boils down to this in the domain that we're considering. If I take the log of both sides, I get this expression. And then you'll note the log of the ratio of two currents, of course, is the log of the first current minus the log of the second. So that means we, we really have a linear equation here in the log of the current. Um, if I define B to be... Um, so let's see, where did I define A? Oh, I've lost my A definition somewhere. Um, A is this junk out in front. We define A and B like so. It lost it somehow. I don't know where that happened. A is this junk out in front. So um, I think maybe it's a GitHub thing, because I, I know it's in there. A is A to KBT over Q. And uh, and then B is defined as minus A times the natural log of I0. Anyway, if you, uh, if you plug all that in, you get the voltage is a slope times the log of I versus an inter uh, plus an intercept. So this is a Y equals MX plus B. A is like M, B is like B, natural log I is like X, and VD is like Y. Y equals MX plus B. It's a straight line, right? So we're trying to, the ultimate goal here is to get I0 and eta, and I0 and eta depend directly on A and B. Let's, uh, all right, so let's see how that works. Okay, just to prove to myself I wasn't crazy, here's what's in GitHub right now. If I load it into, I went ahead and did a, uh, um, hang on. I did a git clone of the actual repository, and then if I pop down here into project one, and I look at the notebook for the exercises, you can see that A is correctly defined here. A is this coefficient out in front. It's this, it's the, uh, basically it's the stuff that divides VD, okay? So A is defined like this. B is defined like this. If if you know A, KBT and Q are all natural constants and the temperature of the room around 70 degrees Celsius, which you've got to convert to Kelvin, of course. Um, so it's whatever, 300 Kelvin. Um, <clears throat> KB is the Boltzmann constant. Q is the charge on the electron. These things are just constants of nature. But eta depends on the diode. So eta is a parameter of the Shockley formula that you need to find. It can't get it. You have to measure it experimentally. So that's a thing we want. But if we get the slope of this line, that gives us A. And we know these other guys, so we can calculate eta. So you can get eta from the slope of this graph. And once you have eta, or once you have A, then you can, and if you also get B, right, then you can get I0. I0 is the leakage current so that's the other, the two parameters that we don't know from the Shockley formula that we need to actually measure are I0 and eta. And that's the whole point of this experiment is to get this data, uh, calculate I0 and eta. Okay, we're trying to find the parameters of the Shockley formula for the diode, the diode that you used in the lab. Okay, as a side effect, you're also going to learn about how diodes work. So and what, how they behave. And that's important because we're going to be using diodes a lot. And you will be using diodes a lot in your career, I'm sure. So that's the point. Um, let's go back to the notebook, and then let's look at this thing. So we've got um, the voltage difference. We now can calculate the current. Um, <clears throat> and I want to I want to just plot um, the log of the current 
on the x-axis and I want to plot the voltage of the diode, that's V-bot, on the y-axis and look at that. Now I want you to notice that that's not exactly a straight line. It's nearly straight. If I were to uh, cut out some of the low current values it would be nearly straight. The reason it's not exactly straight is we we've left out something that turns out to be important. It turns out the the diode actually has a little bit of uh, resistance, internal resistance, and we haven't included that in our model. We can't measure the actual voltage across the junction. We can only measure the voltage on the on the uh, pins of the diode, and so it turns out by neglecting that uh, resistance, we're missing that bit, and so our model isn't going to be exact. Now we're going to go back later as an ex as a mathematical exercise. Uh, I'm going to have you guys use a more sophisticated model and and fix that problem. But for now, I just want you to leave it and uh, just make the best guess at the parameters A to NI0 um, based on the data that you have. And that means fitting this data as best you can with uh, a linear, completely linear model. So uh, the way you, you want to do that is to use the polyfit. You can use polyfit exactly the way we used it before. It's just that now in, for x, you're going to use the natural log of i, and for y, you're going to use the voltage across the diode, which is the voltage at the bottom of that sense resistor. So I'm not going to uh, bore you by going through all that in detail, but that's the idea. So you can use the, we're using the same approach we used last week. We've got this device, we're trying to measure its uh, characteristics by measuring the voltage drop across it and the current through it. Um, but it turns out it's not linear this time, it's a nonlinear device. So we have to use a nonlinear model, which means basically we gotta take the log of the current, not the current, and, and fit the log of the current versus the voltage to a straight line. It's not a, re it's not a resistance, so you can't just take the voltage and the current and make a plot of those guys. You gotta take the log of the current first. Okay, that's all I have for you. I hope that helps. Um, talk to you soon.